Hi, my name is Kai from Navigo, and in this video I'm going to be demonstrating the new features in Odyssey Draft 2.4. We have divided them into three categories – flow simulation, location improvements and other improvements. If you're looking at this video on YouTube, you can click on the topics here in the timeline to jump to them directly. But we recommend watching all of this, because you might learn some nice little workflow improvements that will make your life with Odyssey Draft so much easier. Alright, let's begin with flow simulation. In the 2.2 version, we have introduced the modeling of flow logic using variables and conditions. But Odyssey Draft has only been the authoring tool. It couldn't actually evaluate the logic or have something like a runtime game state to track variable states. With the 2.4 update, Odyssey Draft now has its own execution engine running under the hood. It's invisible, but it boots up when you play through the flow, actually simulates the logic and reports back to the design tool. So Odyssey Draft 2.4 becomes your powerful StoryFlow prototyping environment. This is what you can do already in the previous versions. Go to Global Variables, create a new variable set, for example quest states, and fill it with boolean or number variables. In the flow editor, you can use these variables and conditions to control the flow of the story. Conditions can either be on pins directly before the node, or in a dedicated condition node. To change variable values, you can place instructions on output pins, or, like with the conditions, in a dedicated instruction node. Now, let's start a presentation from this node. This creates a temporary journey and runs the simulation. A journey is one path through the flow, with everything that happens on the way. You can save your journey in the project anytime. For your orientation, I'm putting the flow and the presentation side by side. And down here, we are going to track Francis' attitude towards Henry. <laughs> Let's be nice to her. As you can see, whenever the simulation gets to instructions like this one, the attitude changes. Quickly playing through this. We just asked her for help fixing our wheelchair. And now we are here on this hub, Francis Reaction, and we get a positive response because we were nice to her. I'll now switch to analysis mode. And we can see that Odyssey Draft was hiding two other options because their conditions aren't fulfilled. Let's compare the player mode and the analysis mode side by side. You can switch between them with this icon below the presentation. In the player mode, you only see things relevant for the player, so you're experiencing the story from the player's point of view. Scripts and variables are hidden, and you only see dialogue choices that are currently available based on the current simulation state. The analysis mode shows you all the scripting details, invalid dialogue choices and even visualizes which part of a condition is true or false. While you're playing through the flow in this presentation view, you can switch to the property page of each step in the journey, called Journey Point. Or, alternatively, you can open a new pane and click on the Property Inspector. Click on Variable States to see the current values of your variables. Now, as we play through the flow, you can see how the values are changing. If we are only interested in certain values, we can filter them here. Or only list variables that were changed on this particular journey point or throughout the journey. Ok, back to the flow. You've seen the use of variables in conditions and instructions. Another new feature in the flow simulation is methods. Methods are a good way to call custom logic in a condition for things outside the Odyssey world. Let's say we're interested in the weather and want to say a different dialogue option when it's raining. You don't need to register methods. Just type a method name here and add round brackets. You can also specify arguments. Odyssey Draft cannot actually know any of this, but when the simulation gets to condition or instruction with a method, you can manually set a value to be used in the logic simulation. In some situations, Odyssey Draft's logic simulation has to jump ahead and evaluate conditions on succeeding nodes. In this case, methods are ignored in the forecast, 
and the corresponding conditions return a so-called inconclusive state. That essentially means that it is impossible to anticipate whether this will be true or false when the simulation gets to the condition in the future. If you're using our runtime library Odyssey Access, all this evaluation functionality and expression parsing is at your disposal in your own game. You can easily add your custom code and register implementations for methods used in the scripts so that Odyssey Access can actually use the current weather in the story logic, like in our example before. Alright, that's it for the flow simulation. The next big bunch of improvements has been made to the location editor. The previous iteration of the location editor was limited to primitive shapes, links, paths and spots in front of a background picture. We have now expanded that significantly. Add as many image layers as you want. Add text to your locations. Let elements point at a spot on the map using anchors. Customize the styling of all elements and transform them conveniently. Our dungeon location here still looks pretty empty. Here's our layer stack and we'll create a new layer folder called Objects. I'll open a new pane and switch to the Library tab here. That gives me a convenient drag and drop source for entities, assets and locations. I can easily filter them to only show my dungeon props. So let's put a few pillars here. When you drop an image asset, you can choose whether to insert it as an image layer or just a link to the image. Here in this case, we want to insert it as an image. Alternatively, you can use the image tool here. This will ask you to select an image first and then lets you place it on the location. If your existing locations in the previous version had a background image, it will be converted into a standard image layer behind everything. You can see all your image layers here in the layer stack, which indicates that they are regular Odyssey Draft objects. You can add templates to images and all other location objects and Odyssey Draft objects in general to configure their attributes and behavior. So let's put a crack in the floor here and use a template to turn it into a trigger area. Now when the player steps on it, it'll transform into a massive hole in the ground. What else do we have? Let's build an altar here. Creatures have been sacrificed here, so we need some blood. You can set the transparency of your images with this slider. A ritual knife, a pile of bones, and some candles. I don't really like this extra candle here, so I'll just crop the image and there it goes. Reorder elements here in the layer stack to move them in front or behind other objects. Transformation became much more convenient. You can now easily scale, rotate or flip selected location objects, but more on that later. If you're using the location editor as a planning and communication tool, you may want to add images and let them point at something on the map. For example, to give quick access to concept art for a certain area. To do so, you can add one or more anchors. Let's pin this one here as well. So this thing is relevant for two different areas. Here's an area with lots of links and spots. They make this part of the map look pretty cramped. It is now possible to change the visualization of links and spots. You can make them bigger or smaller and change their shape type. You can specify their default appearance in the settings, I'll show you that later. In this 2D platformer example, we're using the location tool to sketch out certain puzzles and explain gameplay elements. We are playing as a human and let's say we need to pass through the moonlight here to transform into a werewolf, which we need in order to jump high enough for this platform. So I'll add a text field here and communicate my design idea. Adjust the formatting. And there you go. Texts can also have anchors. So if we put one here, it is really clear now that this text refers to the window. Now let me switch this other layer folder here for player paths to visible. You can see that we are using paths here to communicate the intended way to solve this level. 
paths have already been in the previous versions, but they are now more flexible, can have custom start and end points and different styles. You can also decide whether you want the name label to be rendered or not. Most location objects allow you to switch the display name on and off to keep it clean. I mentioned earlier that we have improved the transformation tools. In contrast to previous versions of Artisty Draft, you can now actually rotate and scale objects. Wow! <clears throat> You can switch between an axis-aligned or object-aligned bonding box for the transformations. Set the pivot point for rotations and conveniently transform multiple objects at once. Let me show you the various transformation features in action. Voila! Besides these two big areas, flow simulation and location improvements, we have added a few new things here and there. Somewhat related to the location improvements, there's a new page in the project settings for object defaults. You don't have to adjust the styling of location objects over and over again. Here's your central control point for some of the frequently used options. Switch the display of name labels and drop shadows on and off, Set the default size for links and spots and some more. In the project selector of the single user version, you can now easily clone a project. And last not least, in the flow editor, you can use annotations to structure your flows. Thanks to the new styling and formatting options on annotations, your flow will be much easier to read and understand. That's it for this video. A link to a full list of improvements and fixes can be found in the description below. As an owner of the 2.x season of Odyssey Draft, you should find an update notification in the tool. Enjoy the new features and all the best for your projects!